Hello, welcome. So for the next however long, I'm going to be reading the highest and the lowest rated book on my unread shelf. So obviously the first port of call is to upload all of these books onto Goodreads, so that's what I'm going to do right now. So I finished shelving all of the books onto Goodreads. It took like an hour or something. And I think before we look at the results, I should make some predictions for what I think is going to come up. Now for the lowest, I reckon it's probably gonna be like a horror or perhaps The Perishing. I know that's got a very low average rating. And for the highest rated, it's either going to be something really popular and beloved or it's going to be like The Fifth Heartstopper is my prediction. Let's see what I've got to read. Something I failed to mention was that I also weeded out any third books in series where I hadn't read the first one because even if I ended up getting that book I wouldn't have read it anyway so what was the point even putting there in the first place? I didn't mention that because I'm useless and I don't really know what planet I was on when I was filming these clips. It clearly wasn't Earth. Let's just get up the screen record shall we? Great. Uh, average rating. No. No. I was not expecting that at all. I am a little very gag. I mean, Heartstopper's like right there, but yeah, I'll read this. How many ratings has it got actually? You see only 180 ratings. Is this legitimate? 180, that's still a reasonable amount of people. That is interesting. Now for the lowest rated. Why am I breathing like that? What is wrong with me? Mm, knew it, knew it, told you all. The thing with this one is that I have seen quite a lot of people, well, I've seen one person read this in their own version of this video. And ever since I was curious to see whether I'd like it because it's loosely based around time travel because the main character is immortal and can't she travel through time or something, but it's not very plot focused. It sounded like something that I could like. I think the problem is that it's just mismarketed, which is why the average rating is so so low. Um, <laughs> this is gonna be interesting. I think we should just get reading the books because I have plans. Update number one. I have some thoughts. The first 40 pages of this book was rough. It was rough. And I think the main problem was the pacing. So we're following this guy and his brother goes missing and then he just goes down to Tesco's to get some stuff and then he sees someone that looks really like his brother but he's not sure who this person is and what they're doing there. He knows that his brother's been kicked out of this university place and all of this weird stuff provokes an investigation. The main problem is, right, there's a random time jump two years into the future, but he's been kind of getting nowhere with the investigation. And you know how I feel about random time jumps. I hate them. I think this book just needed an editor. It's self-published, and while I'm not trying to diss self-published books or say that they're all bad, I just feel like if this book had an editor, the whole beginning bit would have been a lot more seamless because it was quite clunky to read. I think it's going to get better because we're delving more into the plot and I think think it's gonna get a bit more interesting. I mean, I hope it does. I also am not a fan of the fact that it's written in third person plural, regardless of who writes it, who publishes it. I always find third person plural a bit grating and it takes me a bit of a while to sink into that style. I don't know what it is about it. It just feels a bit odd to me. I don't know. I'm just hoping it gets a bit better because right now I'm not loving it. So I will update you when I've got a bit further through it. Okay, well, I have finished this book. What did I think about it? Let's begin, shall we? I think it had some interesting things to say about, for example, toxic masculinity. But while I could understand what the author was trying to do, I think it's quite easy to misinterpret. Having said that though, I feel like you're almost given too much information about the sort of, I wouldn't say world, but the Dawley Hall side of it. Because this is the first book, I wish you'd been left more 
more in the dark about what was going on and how it all worked. I also wish that we'd just been following our main character Steph because as soon as we started focusing on other characters I point blank did not care. I did not find their plot points particularly interesting and it was also just pretty repetitive as well just a lot of the same sorts of conversations over and over again. I also think it could have been a bit darker. Now that may be a bit of a calm down because it certainly doesn't shy away from discussing difficult topics but it just does that it just discusses them it doesn't really delve particularly deep into what it could say. I'm talking mostly about the medical horror aspects to this book. There are a few moments where I was sort of going, oh, that's not very nice. But the author had the perfect opportunity to make me really uncomfortable and they just didn't do that. I think I'm going to give it a three. I found it fairly easy to get through, but it just wasn't anything spectacular for me. I wouldn't put anyone off reading this. It was just sort of like, okay, it was good. I get what you're trying to do, but I don't think you went as far as you could have gone. I'm not going to be continuing the series and quite clearly I do not agree with the very high average rating. I think it is just a case of more people need to read this for it to drop down and I'm sure it will. <laughs> that just sounds so degrading to the book. I didn't hate it. I'm talking like I hated it. That's not true. I liked it. Let's move on to the next book shall we? It's called The Perishing, right? Let's hope I don't perish before I finish the book. Heh. <laughs> Hello, I'm trying to seem inconspicuous by using my headphone microphone <laughs> to give you the first update of this book. I mean, it shouldn't really be the first update because I'm like two thirds of the way through it, but I expected more plot. I wasn't expecting plot, but I feel like I was expecting more plot than what we're getting. It's a lot about 1930s Los Angeles journalism, if that appeals to you. I was expecting more conversations on immortality and things like that, and we're really not getting it at all. <laughs> Hello, I'm on the way home and I've finished the book, so I'll tell you my thoughts when I actually get home. <laughs> I'm raising the stakes by suggesting that we should look at why The Perishing is so lowly rated before getting into my thoughts and seeing whether I align with what the masses are saying. So in terms of a review breakdown, most people, 36%, gave it three stars compared to 28% giving it two stars. So that makes up the bulk, but an additional 18% have given it four stars and there are apparently more one stars than five stars, which is a little bit sad. But um, let's see why people didn't like it, shall we? Lou never quite shimmered as a main character in the way I would have expected her to. I felt so disconnected from her the entire time I was reading that by the last time she got around to unraveling the mystery of her existence in literally the last 50 pages of the book, I couldn't have cared less whether she was immortal or not. I just want to be finished with her. Whoa. To be honest, most people are just saying that nothing was happening until the last 50 pages and then nothing really got explained. That is very fair. They are also complimenting the quotable writing. I think before I spoil what I thought, let's just get into the review. So the perishing. <sighs> I was really optimistic about this book. I knew it wasn't going to have a lot of plot. But it really did not have a lot of plot. The ending was a little bit out of left field. I felt that it could have been planted into the story a little bit more. The characters I don't think have fully realised. And I think the whole sort of side plot about the Sarah character, the, the, the sort of like the reincarnated Lou, who is the main person that we're following, that didn't ever reach its potential because we're given bits of information about this main character's previous lives, but it just never was properly explored. It was just sort of like hinted at. I think in a few more revisions of this book, it could have been really good. I didn't find the writing to be overall that memorable, but the quotes that slapped, slapped. I do wish that there had been a little bit more of an exploration of immortality and what it means to be alive and philosophy, basically. I just feel like with what the author was obviously trying to do, I just feel like she didn't really do that. Though that being said, 
at no point did I not enjoy my time. So I think I'm gonna give this a three. Meaning that this video was very unsuccessful. Two three star reads. My least favorite rating to give out because what's, what's the, the point? point? Really, what is the point? They're unmemorable books. Perhaps this was a little bit more memorable just given the concept, but oh well. I hope you've still enjoyed watching nevertheless. Please like, subscribe, all of those lovely YouTube things, and I will see you in my next video. Goodbye.